Hey, Jesse, thanks for, uh, thanks for being here for another video. In the last yeah. one, we talked about really what EVM is, what its advantages are, like the you no know, front running, super fast, super high capacity, super low cost, um, and where it fits in. If people haven't watched that, you should probably you know jump in and, and watch that real quick. I'm guessing there's gonna be a button here. And then, um, but let's, let's move on. Uh, to, you know, why is it taking so long? So here's the situation. A, a lot of people who know the background of this know that um, Block One asked, you know, put out a sort of a bounty on a contract for uh, uh, an EVM and uh, Syed Jaffrey won $200,000. Awesome, very smart, super great programmer. Um, and then the, so people are like, well, why? Why hasn't that, so why is it, you know, why does it take any time? And I don't think they understand the process that we've gone through, um, the reason that no other chains have done this, right? Um, and tell us started because we can work together. And, you know, you and I and a few other people got together and made a list and said, okay, what are the things we need to do if we're actually going to turn this into something, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And our yeah, vision was no. different. Like, what was the original vision? So, so I also think people don't understand that what we're building as a full, multi-party EVM is not what the actual uh, what the actual spec called for, right? Right. So the, the original spec was a fully functional EVM implementation, which runs Solidity code inside of a you know, EOS IO smart contract with, mm -hmm. with Telos runs. Yeah. Um, so the, the spec focused on actually getting apps from Ethereum or other EVM chains to be able to run on, you know, an EOS chain like, like Telos. Um, but in, in the way that it was originally intended was that they would, the app would deploy their own EVM and then yeah. take their existing contracts, put them into that EVM, and then kind of build some integrations probably with MetaMask. But also one thing that's really interesting is that they included in the requirement that native wallets so like a telos wallet and a telos account can uh interact with the evm you know solidity yeah. contract that's um, cool that's with, cool i like with also thing. having metamask like we've seen in other videos yeah. and, and everything working just fine um, and you turn that into a really cool additional feature that i don't i like i think that i think that um you know for people who don't know jesse like dive really deep into this and he and he pulled out a lot of things i you to you you and and he discovered hey we can do this i don't know if that was it doesn't mean it was necessarily the original plan for it maybe it was um but yeah it was it was i mean i, I spoke with said he said that was one of their okay. pieces of their specs that for him to he had to i mean the guy worked really hard and was quite quiet for weeks or five months i don't remember how long it was and then came out you know and said hey here it is, you know, yeah. I met all their specs and I think there was some back and forth before everything was like, yeah, you, you nailed it, but he, oh, yeah. he did, did everything they asked for. Um, but some of the things that were, were not part of the spec that, you know, that weren't necessarily thought out is how would you run this as a like EVM that's public that anybody can yep. use that, yep. um, you know, multiple different apps could just use it in the same way that all the other EVMs are used. Yeah. Um, that because that so, wasn't because I think I think that what the what the intent was, just to kind of take what you were saying, and we've talked about this a lot. I think the intent was for well, at some level, I think the intent was just pure bragging rights, right? Um, but uh, even within that, I think that it, I mean it, it's the whole EVM running in one. Yeah, part it's contract. a that, that's bragging. it's a competitive it's a competitive world, and we went and people wanted to show how much more powerful. Uh, EOS IO technology is than than Ethereum technology, and and it's factual, and it's true. So that's cool. They wanted to show that, but it was like a science experiment, and it's not not like a not like a you know the business, right? So mm -hmm. I think they really envisioned like one company taking, hey, we've got these three old um, uh, Ethereum things, and we want to stop paying money for them, so we're going to run our own things. And it's going to be for our own company and whatnot, and it's going to run faster and cheaper on our own on our own thing. But nobody really seemed, based on what the specs are, to to me, to be envisioning that this was going to be an Ethereum competitor, um, a you know a, a Binance Spark Chain competitor, or even like just a much more powerful, uh, let alone one that you know where you can where you can have you know much faster transactions, you know a, the massive entire capacity of the Telos blockchain if needed mm -hmm. 
and um, you know, in the super low costs, right? The and and the other things like the front, the the elimination of front running, like those things, people didn't quite get that until you know. I think you and I sat down with some other smart folks in the team and and said, "Hey, could we do this?" And it's like, "Yeah, let's do it." Yeah, and so the you know the the RPC, which you know, without getting too technical, that's the thing that all the wallets talk to this API. That- it's a server that 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 yeah. I mean, there's there's it's a server that's between MetaMask and the Ethereum blockchain. And most people don't think about it, but yeah, you, if it wasn't on, your, your MetaMask wouldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, there's nobody for MetaMask to talk to. Um, so the, the, you know, the implementation of that for to meet the spec was, it was called the mock RPC. It wasn't a fully fledged one. It, it yeah. satis- it, you know, you could use MetaMask, um, but you know, I jumped in and tried to use what was there and it didn't work with mobile. You know, so we had to figure yeah. out yeah. a lot of different things that just weren't, part of the spec and, and needed to get the bounty you know that's understandably where you know the, yeah, the bucket they had to draw up. some they had to create the envelope that they were yeah. going to do and they would have to been like a it would have to be a million dollar thing if everybody if they were really going to make make all these things yeah but, so what we've been what we've been working on is you know we talked in the last video about gas fees having it a fixed price because that's you know the logical approach um yeah i touched on it in the last video but handling for RAM because there's a cost to RAM on, on mm-hmm. the native Telos and the EVM didn't really consider it at all. Um, so there were some opportunities if it was a public EVM like what we're building, um, not a private one like you described, like a company would just port their stuff over for themselves. There's an opportunity for spam and, and you know people to abuse yeah. resources, things like that, that we had to consider. So we had to design for that and modify the contract so that a public network wide open anybody can use it we don't have to worry about resources you know spam things like that being abused um and then there were some other things that we wanted to add to uh about you know the, in the original implementation it just kind of collected the fees but didn't account for them so yeah. where do they go and for telos it's a public network we are taking all the gas fees and feeding it back into the network um and to do that we had to add the, the accounting in there that actually each fee gets transferred away to a, a fees account so it can accumulate separately, not in the same account where we don't even know how many fees have been collected. Uh, yeah. Things like that. There were some tokenomics. Um, so there were technical things. There were also tokenomics things. There were also getting people, you know, there are also things like having a block block explorer and history nodes and stuff like that. Yeah. I made, as I recall, I made I made a list one night of about thir- of not about of 13 things that had to happen if we were going to turn this into what we want it to be, you know, science contract into what we want it to be. And um, some, you know, and like any list, some things were pretty easy and uh, I volunteered for those. And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even, involve, actually, I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I think I made the list and then, and then just like showed up for meetings. Uh, all the hard stuff we gave to you, Jesse, and um, <laughs> and you've done an amazing job. You've 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 exceeded expectations, um, but we also had a lot of other people like like um, EOS Rio. We, we though they made their history nodes work, and then their block explorer. I'd love to show the block explorer. Can we pull that up? Because I mean, that's kind of a big thing. That's what most people when most people think about okay, what's Ethereum? They think about it in terms of either the front ends of of a DAP like Uniswap or they think of MetaMask or they think of a you know or they think of the block explorer which is how you really kind of look at it and no one had one there wasn't one and yeah. we have one because because you and 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 uh and Igor uh and a few other people worked together to make this thing possible so you know then then it feels like a real blockchain right mm-hmm. yeah so um that was that's another really good example of something that was just not needed for the the spec was history right you know as yeah. long as it and and to be totally fair there was there's a set of ethereum tests they all pass right so the, the evm yep. itself was a lot of work to pass the tests and, yeah um, exactly well no it's great like let's 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 take one second to look at that there's a test suite of ethereum stuff and it passed all of it so right. it's not, and that was part of the requirement. That was good. You know, I'm, it's perfect that, that block one set that up in that way. That's what you would want. Um, and, and it did. So that, that if we, if it had done that, it really wouldn't be, a, you know, if we had to sort of start from there, it would be difficult, but it's still, it's still left. There was still much to do. Right. To because for, to pass a test, you need to have the history of transactions that happened since you started running the test. 
but we all know that you might want to see a transaction from yesterday. Yeah, um, it's fine. So it's all, it's of, fine for like, something if you're just going to run your own thing. If, all, right. if the only vision for it is you're going to run your own thing and basically like in Truffle or something like that, um, then it's fine. But if you're going to make it to make the the orders of magnitude of complexity that grow when you say, I'm going to take this and not just run our server, it's going to be real public blockchain Ethereum replacement, um, you know, then, um, then, you know, if it can do everything that Ethereum can do, that's a that's a much bigger that's a much bigger task that we we sort of undertook. So this goes back to hey why why didn't you guys just flip a switch and start this? And um and these are some of the reasons why and and you know it's also the reason why it's not doesn't exist on EOS or Wax or any of the other EOSIO chains that had the access to everything else that we had. And I'm excited. So share your screen, man. Share your screen. Show us that block explorer. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, this is the block explorer. Can you see it? It's, you're not sharing your screen yet. I need to pick the screen to share. You want that one? Yeah. There we go. This is how computers work. Thanks. I, I'm new. I'm new here. <laughs> I don't know much I'm about it. What are these computer things? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's now that's funny. Okay. Um, so the you know, this is the block explorer. It it's actually one of the cool things about it is it's a decentralized block explorer because we have five, six different um, folks, VPs running Hyperion on, on Telos. Um, and they each have their own front end of this. So it kind of comes. It, exactly. That's like an extra people. level of dive difficulty that cool. we're adding for, for every, you know, because because like if you're building this, like why was, well, why is BSC able to go, you know, get this thing done so fast? Well, they had millions of dollars for development, but also they're just making a centralized chain. You know, anytime you try to to add this, add real decentralization to this, especially at every point, like like you said, at the, you know, here at the at the the history nodes and stuff, it just add, it just massively increases the the, you know, the complexity of it. Yeah. So this is the explorer. You can search um, by the public key. You can search by the transaction. There's you can do what you would expect there. Um, we, in the last video, just a sec, you know, a second ago in, in magic time, um, you, you sent me a, you sent me too soon and I sent you point too soon. Mm -hmm. And, um, can we look at those transactions? Yeah. So I, I'll just copy that account, uh, paste it here. And let's see what they look like. Um, so boom, that's fast. That's faster than, than <laughs> so these, and, and so they you know, as we're talking about why didn't we just launch it, there's still more work to be done here. I mean, here you see the, the raw data, which means, you know, not a whole lot. Um, it does to me. Look at that. That's a, <laughs> to but, transfer command and uh, from yeah, what account to, to what account. From, I believe that would be you. That would be me. Um, you know, if I look at the from here, we can see, yeah. oh, look, I've got that much uh, of the Telos native token, token, which is Telos. Um, that's about right, isn't it? Um, one would hope <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's um you know there's my history here i think um you, you know, could look at you could go look at that transaction and then in that transaction you could go look at my so okay that's yeah i think, that, I think this was to you here yeah um so there you go um from from me yeah now this um, is this is this is a real live block explorer and and God, for me, it's so great to see it because uh, for for up until up until um, you know three weeks ago or two weeks ago, we were having to do all this development without this block explorer, and we'd have to actually go onto blocks and look stuff up and look to look on the blockchain. It was like it was it was less it was less efficient. It's right. nice to have this, but it doesn't look like and, yet like a block explorer like EtherScan yet. Right. right. So there's 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 more improvements that we know and have you know listed out that we want to make um, make there. And the other interesting thing, if we look here, you know, if we go look at the the actual contract mm -hmm. from the Telos native perspective, we can also see, you know, the transactions coming in. Yeah. And it yeah. and in and this is the view from Telos like native that you would be familiar with if you use Telos. Yeah. Um, but it also knows in here kind of what some of the data is. It's decoded it and it also links back into the Ethereum EVM address. Yep. Tell us UVM address, right? Um, so this is really cool, right? We have a we have a block explorer that is essentially both a Telos and Ethereum based block right. explorer. And, and and I anticipate that this will 
evolve into something that's quite useful. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll also end up coming up with a bespoke block explorer that's just the EVM that's very focused on making that mm -hmm. a good user experience. Yeah. Um, and and it will use, um, you know, Hyperion is a really awesome piece of technology. It reads all the data that comes through the blockchain. It puts it in Elasticsearch, uses RabbitMQ, and um, it has APIs to access that data um, for all the dApps. <laughs> so all the apps that want to access the data, they, for the most part, are using Hyperion. They're, yeah. They want to show all the things that have happened in the past few days. They query an API on Hyperion. If they want to stream it live, like a fire hose of data from a web socket, they connect to Hyperion and say, tell me everything that happens on this contract or this account. I want to know everything that happens for this account. They can stream it live. And as, as you're sitting there watching the screen, you don't touch anything. You don't refresh anything. It's popping up with things that happen, right? So we'll get all that same functionality out of Hyperion for the EVM. And we're a couple of nerds, Jesse. <laughs> um, <laughs> because we care and, and like most people really, would not would not think that was exciting to watch a bunch of tra fire hose transactions going the, on the, the point is that hyperion here is a fundamental important part of of like building things on the evm um and this block explorer is, is good for like everybody to use and hyperion will still be in the picture for you know all of the apps that yeah. build and, and maybe a new block explorer um it'll have all the streaming functionality that you know, Ethereum has through their, uh, their events that all yeah, actually three, six months from now. I mean, because we're going to make, we're going to like, I think we, our job is kind of to make the first one. And then once we've got the first one made, then we're then in open source it, then, you know, we want everyone to make it, you know, like, just like on DeFi, as we, as we create some of these DeFi structures, we're going to open source them and people can just copy them because the great thing about DeFi has been how easy it is to, to copy things and add, you know, and add one more thing, right. And, and try something new. And that's all going to happen on, on Telos EVM. It'll also happen on Telos native. Mm -hmm. Cool. I love seeing this. Um, so, so the question of why is it taking so long? Are, is there progress being made? You know, is, you know, I, what I hope people see from this video is it, it takes long because it's a, it's a big process, you know, like there's lots of acronyms and words and things that <laughs> all each of them representing an actual real idea of high complexity that mostly Jesse, you had to figure out and you've done an amazing job. Um, and the rest of the team is working on and we're making amazing progress, I think. Um, uh, you know, like think about how many other far better funded um, projects are out there that are not really, haven't even attempted it. And here we are, you know, uh, homing in on the, on, the, on the end of it. So why don't, in my, and by the way, my hat is definitely off to you and, and everyone else who's, who's doing that, Jesse. You've, I joke mm -hmm. around about it, but man, you, you've done, this is a hard thing. It's a hard thing. It's good. It's good when there's hard things that you only have to do once. And then once they're done, you can use them for forever. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to that. Let's do our next video. Um, let's sign off here. And then in our next video, we can talk about, all right, so now we know what it is. Now we know why it's taken a while. You know, what's next? What's, where's it going? How, when, how soon can we start playing with it? And what are the next steps? What, what are we going to see next? Let's do that in the next video. Cool.